economists often talk about quitting as a sign of optimism. So it's not necessarily a negative thing. And certainly when you look at some of the industries at the moment, such as leisure and hospitality, they're all sectors that over the last year or so have seen a huge amount of quitting, as, as the economists refer to it. And that's, you know, that can be driven by um, a desire to step up or get more money. And, and at the moment, those are industries where there are more roles than there are people. Right? So mm -hmm. we will naturally see quite a lot of movement. So that's one of the reasons. And then the second one that I think we see is around people seeking a better work-life balance, which is the thing that we talk about a lot, isn't it? So where people are looking now, and particularly after the pandemic, where they have been working at home and proving this concept, they want their work to fit into their lives rather than their life to fit into their work. So do you kind of agree with those as the two main drivers for the Great Resignation? Do you see anything else? Yeah, I think um, specifically in the year of the pandemic, so 2020, um, the lines between work life and home life definitely became a lot mm. more blurred. And I think that gave people the opportunity and the space to really appreciate their life outside of work um, just a bit more than they had done before. And I think that encouraged a switch in behaviour, maybe a switch in values and expectations they see from an employer mm. um, that then propels us into this era that we are in now. Mm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think people are being more picky about what they want out of work. Um, like you said, about there's more there's more roles out there than there are people, so people have more options to turn down other opportunities. They can be more picky. Um, so yeah, I definitely think those are kind of the two main factors that mm. put us into this situation. Mm. And it's, there's increased confidence, isn't there, in people's ability to be able to do that in a different yeah, way? Yeah, definitely, and having that confidence to say to an employer, you know, push back on certain areas and. I think people are becoming much more understanding of it as well. So mm. when people do push back, um, employers and organisations are understanding mm. of that. Mm. And resisting being treated like a commodity, which is something that some people have felt um, exactly, over yeah. recent years. Mm. I think there's one more thing at play that's probably worth mentioning as well, is, is the role of is women as, as members of the paid workforce as well, because actually we're seeing the lowest rates we have in 30 years now. So we've seen a downward trend since... Um, the financial crisis of 2008, but there was a real drop last year. And there is thought that really that's because women are often playing that role of caregivers in the home as well. So that's been a particular challenge to women um, that's adding to, the, to that statistic of, of the great resignation. I was wondering whether you, with your background, had thoughts on that. Um, yeah, so I guess in terms of that, because of obviously what Amy's already mentioned about working from home, those lines were kind of blurred. So when people were mm. doing homeschooling and trying to work from home, yeah. a lot of that did fall onto to the mother at work, um, you know, when mum's working from home. Um, I think that's like statistics shocking, um, but I think, you know, having that flexibility of working from mm. home and then falling into homeschooling. So there are different reasons why people are moving around. Um, but there's probably a consistent set of things that they're looking for as they're either moving or considering whether to move. Um, and that's what we spend, do spend quite a bit of time talking about, whether that's with our clients or actually looking internally as well in terms of how we um, you know, treat, treat our people and try and retain our talent. And Ames, you had, you had some thinking around that, didn't you? I did, yes. Um, so I've had about maybe five years experience in the working world post-uni and even though it has been a short time, I have really seen the comparison between work before the pandemic and you know this new era of you know flexible working, more values, more um, just more space, I guess, and freedom for the employer themselves and more growth. And I think it's really important to just think about not only how the employee is feeling in terms of what they want from a job now, um, but I think also the employers are then you know switching on to that and realizing. It is a new era of work and um, our workforce is going to be expecting a lot more than just mm. a nine to five and just, you know, the bog standard standards that we have had in the past. Um, and I think that switch is really powerful because it is propelling us into this new era of work. And I think productivity levels have risen as a result of it as well. And I think, you know, if we, if we think about that, that, that range of, of things that, that people are looking for, you know, we do still want the basics. We do still want, as we mentioned earlier only in terms of some of the older more traditional type benefits that you get whether it's the coffee that we're drinking <laughs> at the moment yeah. or you know some fruit which is really lovely but we organizations have been doing that for years now haven't they and, and actually you do want the offer of an employee assistance program or gym membership that actually helps with your well-being mm -hmm. um, or perhaps a concierge service that helps with your life admin as well and just takes a bit of the pressure off there so i think there are lots of 
creative things that organisations can do. What, have you guys come across any really creative ideas of any of your friends or experiences that you've had of, of things that have contributed to that? Personally, I think compared to what we are offered here at SNS, um, perhaps not. Um, and I don't know really how that sounds, mm -hmm. but I think SNS is sort of pioneering the way in which a great place to work looks like and the culture that the harvesting and the values that we really embody in our roles and also as a workforce because we do spend most of our time with our work colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, and I think SNS really do take it seriously in terms of making sure we feel comfortable, empowered and valued, um, especially at work. Yeah, I think I'd agree when I talk to my friends about kind of the benefits that we have here, flexible ways of working. I think, you know, I come out on top compared to my friends <laughs> at the place I work, so definitely agree with Amy on that one. I think what we offer here is definitely mm. one of the best. Mm. And I think the under, and thing that underpins it all, which we mustn't forget, because I think we sometimes take this for, for granted where we work, but it's that, um, it's fulfilling work with purpose. You know, that's what we're all looking for, whether we are associates working with some of our clients or us internally or, or colleagues that we know, you know, we all want that purpose and to understand the value that we're bringing to organisations. That, that, that makes our work meaningful, which is really important. I think that we're going to continue to see quite a bit of shifting as organisations find out how they want to work in the future. So, you know, I, I certainly hear of, of friends I have who've been working from home quite a lot over the last few months and all of a sudden the organisation's gone, no, you have to now come in five days a week again. Um, and that might, may then prompt some people to leave because that may not be how they want to work or other organisations may be entirely home-based, some of the ones that we've, we've talked about. So I think whilst that shift's going on, I think we're going to still continue to see people moving around. But I think the most important thing for me is that organisations need to be authentic when they're offering this. They need to genuinely mean it um, and be committed to giving people a great uh, experience whilst they're at work and, and recognising that all of their employees have responsibilities and lives outside work and that we all want to balance those and they need to do that genuinely.